Hello everybody, here we go. I'm starting again. Got halfway through my video and uh, my mom came to pick up the dog we dog sat for one day. Which is an adventure with two cats. <laughs> Alright, so according to the last thing that I have posted, it says that I was talking about days 11, 12, 13, and 14. I swear I've done another video. Oh, let me just check in my recordings and see if I can find... Nope, that's the last recording I have. I don't know what to say. That was a whole week ago. I can't believe it's been a whole week. So here we go. And when I look at some of the stuff I'm going to talk about in terms of a week ago, I swear I've already said this. I feel like I'm going to be repeating myself. But anyway, it says that I covered 11, 12, 13, and 14. So here we go. We are now covering 14 through 21 an entire week. So I apologize to you who are following along on your diet. And this is not the best set of videos in terms of day by day by day keeping track. But I'll let you know how things went in general. All right, so on day 15... I had no food that day. I remember talking about this, I swear. Um, anyway, I had no food that day, and um, the next morning it said minus 0.7. The day after that, I had my cup of buffalo chicken dip. I don't know, cup to cup and a half of buffalo chicken dip with a plethora of celery. I try to just get it, like, just damp, really, and then take a big bite of it. And then every now and then you scoop up, well, often scoop up chunks of chicken because mine is about five times more chicken inside of it than what the recipe calls for because um, I don't want to eat a whole bunch of fats I want to eat the chicken I want to eat the protein all right so um, that next morning after that buffalo chicken dip and celery it said minus 0.4 fine uh, the next day I had two of the chicken patties that are frozen you get in the sleeve um, heated those up just in the microwave. They're all pre-cooked and with a whole bunch of lettuce and some uh, no sugar added honey mustard dressing. Next morning um, the scale said minus 0.4. Okay, going in the right direction. Not great numbers, but good numbers. You know, better than 0.1 or 0 or a gain, right? Day after that would be day 18. Day 18 I had the same buffalo chicken dip and some celery and uh, meh, bowel movement, <laughs> which I think affects things. So I thought the scale would be better than it was just because I had somewhat of a bowel movement, but it said minus 0.3 the next day. All right, I'll take it. We're going in the right direction. Day 19. Day 19, I had two grilled chicken breasts that were from a long time ago and they were frozen. So I defrosted them and I had both of the chicken breasts in a whole bunch of lettuce with the no sugar added honey mustard dressing and that day was a minus 1.4. Now I try my hardest to get on the scale at the exact same time every morning but different things affect you in different ways. Water retention is a real thing with me. I get swollen a lot in my fingers and my ankles. It depends if I'm standing a lot, if I'm running errands, if I'm, you know, I just, so, you know, do I recommend having two grilled chicken breasts with honey mustard dressing every day? Cause, cause, you, cause you can lose one and a half pounds. And now, I don't know if it was just an adjustment or hopefully it was just a false positive in terms of loss of numbers because let me tell you about the last two days then. Yesterday um, the food that I ate was literally one beef hot dog. That's it. Dipped it in mustard and ate it. That's all I had all day. I was at the water park all day. I ate that while I was at the water park. I didn't get home till after 8.30. Took a shower. You know, checked the mail. Went through some stuff for my business. Went to bed. I was so excited to get on the scale the next day. And it said plus 0.2. I don't know. I think it's an adjustment from the minus 1.4, which was, again, I think a false positive. I'd rather not have a false positive. I would rather have that day said minus 0.4, and then this one said minus 0.2. But in the end, you know, I'm basically staying in the same range where I lose from 0.2 to 0.4 in a given day. And then today, I had a large bowel movement yesterday. <laughs> TMI, I know, but 
when that happens, you know the scale has to affect it. It has to be affected by it, especially when you've gone for so long with really without having anything significant coming out of your body. So I think because of that, because I knew it was day 21, I started thinking maybe I should be transitioning into P3 because I wasn't really good about taking my drops the couple days before. Maybe that has something to do with it. The fact that I wasn't taking the drops, I would think I'd be losing more weight because it wouldn't be taking the fat, but I don't know. Anyway, I had the last bowl of the buffalo chicken dip, but fear not. I bought more ingredients this morning. Um, gonna make another batch. Um, so I had the last batch with a whole bunch of celery, finished up all the rest of the celery. But then as the day went on, I thought, well, if I'm transitioning to P3, probably should be eating a few more calories. Let's just eat something that's P3 appropriate. So I had a can of cocktail peanuts, and so I was eating the cocktail peanuts while I was watching a movie. So I don't know how much I ate. That's not good. And then following that, I had one of those little round Baybell cheeses. I don't think they were the light because I believe we got them from Costco and I don't think Costco sells the light. So I had one of those, which are amazing. Especially when you haven't been eating cheese for a month. But then later on that evening, exact same thing again. Another Baybell cheese followed by some more cocktail peanuts. And the scale was not my friend this morning. It said plus 0.2. Again, so two days in a row plus 0.2. I don't think for two days I had any drops. <clears throat> Definitely a day and a half. So I feel like that amount of food should have been okay, not being on the, on the drops. And then I thought about it and I just thought, you know what, Jenny, you have been so successful. I have gone 21 days, and out of all of those days, let's see how many of them I had again. Scrolling, mm, plus 0.4, plus 0.3. And then these last two days, plus 0.2, plus 0.2. Other than that, they were all losses every day. And those weren't significant gains. Those, you know, could have been a matter of just anything that causes that caused that. It shouldn't normally be of concern, but I just feel like I can't be going into P3 like this. So I am took some drops and I'm like I'm getting back on the bandwagon I'm needing P2 appropriate again today ish <laughs> PT adjacent <laughs> however it is that I do it and um, I'm gonna do it for another week one more week because then I have a week of all the kids plus my future son-in-law all being in our house followed by four days out of town for the wedding lots of food is gonna be consumed that it shouldn't be consumed all right, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this today. Let me click on, I'm not looking at myself here. There I am. Hold this so that you can see it. HCG Gourmet Cookbook. I ordered this online thinking, you know what? I do always eat the same food all the same time, which I am not opposed to at all. In fact, I'm a huge proponent of that. Find something you love to eat. Eat it till you're sick of it. I don't get sick of it. If pizza were diet food, I'd eat it every day for 90 days. <sighs> I would. Um, so I wanted to get some more different recipes and ideas and I thought well maybe I can make some cool recipes that maybe the whole family can enjoy. So that's why I got it. Now it does break down the first I think about 15 pages is just talking about the HCG diet which we all know about so none of that is really necessary to read. Yeah, first 20 pages. So starting on page 21, this is how this book is divided up. You can look up foods according to salads and appetizers, dressings, sauces, and marinades, soups, chicken entrees, beef entrees, seafood entrees, vegetables, desserts, beverages. And there's about 100 pages of all of those put together. So when I was going into P3, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll find a really good dessert. So I started, I picked it up and I started looking at the book yesterday. I've had this for probably a month before I haven't looked at it. Um, but the desserts couldn't be more lame. 
they're basically all P2 appropriate desserts. I would have loved to have had some P3 options. This book says 200 low calorie recipes for the HCG phase, which I think is odd how they were that the HCG phase, the HCG diet or the P2 phase of the HCG diet. The HCG diet has three phases really for some people say because they call loading its own phase. So the HCG phase is terminology that I found very odd for them to write on the book but at any rate I think what they mean is phase two of the HCG diet. Therefore basically every single recipe is taking either apples or strawberries and combining different kinds of like cinnamons and stevia or freeze it, make a pop out of it. There is nothing exciting. Spiced orange slices, strawberry sorbet, orange or lemon pop, apple chips, apple slices with cinnamon. Uh, this one says caramel apple pie, and so I was really interested in that, but I don't know how much it's going to actually taste like a caramel apple pie. I'll just read the ingredients. One apple, a tablespoon of lemon juice, a tablespoon of water, a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, a packet of uh, stevia, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, a tablespoon of water, and English toffee stevia to taste. So automatically I thought, where am I going to find English toffee stevia? So that put me off right from the get-go, and I thought, I don't know. But here, let's look. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ingredients. And many of these are that way. Like gingered beef has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ingredients on it. Pretty cap, pretty common anywhere from like eight to twelve ingredients on all of these things. But all of these make one serving. Therefore, the recipes as they're listed are really useless because either one I'm going to cook for the whole family and so I want to multiply it by four or five, or two, if I'm making it for myself, most likely if I go through all of that trouble, am I going to go the next day to Mexican style cilantro chicken and get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve ingredients and put all that together? to make one serving again. Now, some people who love to cook, great. Useless for me. Now I have to sit here and do mental math on every single ingredient and multiply it times 0.4 or times 4 or times 5 to make enough so that when I'm done I can put it aside and then have another meal the next day and the next day or alternate between days and over the course of a week finish it up. So that frustrates me a little bit. I don't know, so many of the recipes are so similar to the one before it that I feel like once you do one of these, you basically can take the same ingredients. Sometimes they say use a teaspoon of it, other times they'll say use a half a teaspoon, but a tablespoon of this where the other one said use a teaspoon. You know, it's just kind of playing with the different spices um, to create these. So I, I will be honest, I am not that thrilled with it homemade mustard. Well, so many mustards have zero carbs that, you know, like who would go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ingredients to make mustard? I don't know. I will say I'm a little disappointed personally. I just thought, I don't know what I thought. Maybe I thought that I would get some P3 recipes in here too, which would then be more interesting. And this isn't. I don't think it was worth the money, quite frankly. I think you can go online and just Google P2 recipes and find probably the same 100 recipes there. So, okay, that's all. I'm not going to go through them. I will make some of these and then tell you what I think. And, oh, this was really great. I didn't expect it to be that great, but, uh, yeah. I just don't see me going through all of this. I'm just not a, a cook. I guess when I was thinking P2 recipes, I would also think quick, fast P2 recipes. Because, I mean, when you're on 
P2, who wants to sit there all day and spend all this time around the smells and all of that food? Like, I just, I need to put it in the back of my mind and, like, stay out of the kitchen. Not spend an hour and a half preparing, you know, my meal every day. Don't want to do it. My life's too busy anyway. I can see I'm never getting on here to get these videos done. I don't have time to spend that much time doing something I don't enjoy. Not a cook. Don't appreciate cooking. Somebody on this channel once told me that one of her favorite P2 recipes was taking a jar of salsa and a bunch of chicken breasts, and just sticking it all in a crock pot, letting the chicken breast cook in with the salsa, and then eventually just taking forks and shredding it and then eating that. So good. And in fact, I do sometimes use the four, four net carb tortillas and stick it on there and eat it with a bunch of lettuce too. And I mean, see that in my mind. So I guess what I need to do is find a really good uh, P2 adjacent. I need to write my own P2 adjacent. <laughs> or maybe just get a P3 cookbook and then take a look at the carb count on it and make sure that it doesn't go over five carbs per meal and I only eat one meal a day so there you go now peanuts do have a lot of carbs so if I was gonna eat nuts those shouldn't have been the ones that I ate but they were the only nuts in the house and I just wanted a snack so do as I say not as I do but no more peanuts now not for the next week because we are back on the P2 kick and we'll see how we do with this final push this last week um, revving back up with some HCG drops. I'll be in touch with you tomorrow and let you know how things are going. If you have any good P2 recipes that are simple and don't have 10 ingredients, let me know and I'll share them with everybody online too. And I'll try it myself. Take care. Bye.